I mean, I don't think he's going to miss weight by any means. I th but I think if you miss weight, you know, it's not, it's just not professional. I've. Download the All Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, I was like, 2023, man, it was an interesting year for you. When you look back at it, you know, I mean, you're supposed to debut in January, and then that was extended all the way to August. Uh, looking back at everything that you had to endure, you know, I mean, there were some things, you know, outside, you know, what I mean, and the adjustments that you had to make. What kind of year was that for you? Oh, it was a hectic year, brother. Um, we had to make a lot of changes with me changing camp and uh, had a couple of injuries I had to deal with. I had to have an eye surgery and, you know what, my knee healed from an LCL tear. So it was a lot of adjustments, but I made a lot of growth, um, even though I had to take a lot of time off of actual competing. I was still training almost every day and, you know, getting better. So I think it was just a building year. You know, I got my foot in the door and I think this year and the next a uh, couple that follow are going to be going to be big for me. For sure. And uh, let's talk about the the debut against uh, Francis Marshall. He was an undefeated prospect. You know, I mean, he came out and had an incredible debut. You finished him in the first round. You know, I wanted to ask you, what holes did you see in his game? Uh, I just thought I was better everywhere. You know, um, he's a, a decent boxer. Uh, I We haven't seen a lot of my striking, but I trained with some of the best strikers in the world. So, I have it. I just haven't had to use it. Uh, grappling wise, you know, I've there's levels to grappling and he's good. No doubt he's good. But a lot of times people say th these guys are good grapplers when there's levels to this, you know, um, and I'm just on a different level. Um, I'm one of the best grapplers in the world. And I think it's just going to continue to show the more I fight. Yeah. Is it kind of an illusion sometimes with the fighters record when they have like submissions and they think that they're submission artists? But really, they're not. Their grappling is not that high level. Yeah, it's it's it comes down to who you who who you're who are you fighting? You know, who do you train with? Um, like I said, I train with some of the best athletes in the world, and I always have since I was a little kid. I've got to compete with thousands of different body types and styles, and so I felt it all. I've done it all. I've felt the most explosive from the most explosive guys to the most powerful guys, uh, the most technical guys all around the board. So nothing new to me in that, in that department. And between your last fight and the start of this training camp, what kept you busy? Man, training for another fight. You know, uh, I planned on fighting again in 2023. I planned to fight November, or December, and you know, I just never got a call. So this is the next best day uh, that I got, that I got given and you know we took it right away uh, no doubt I was re I've been ready to fight the whole time you know I fought I think it was August 12th and about August 20th I was ready to go again so uh, we just we just been waiting around training and getting better that's about it yeah, does it help when you, you only fought for like you know less than a round you know what I mean and you come out like pretty much unscathed yeah, you know, there's no injuries or anything crazy. So I was ready to get back in there and get paid again and uh, compete again and keep climbing. But it just didn't happen in 2023. So we're going to try to get three fights this year, I think, and, you know, rattle them off and, and make my name more of a household name. For sure. And, you know, the, the victory against Francis Marshall, was that an emotional win for you? Especially like you mentioned earlier about all the things that you had to go through before that fight. Yeah, I've, I've been training my whole life for my UFC debut. You know, I've envisioned it since I was a little kid. So to go out there and make it happen like that, you know, that was pretty insane. Because most debuts, it's it's hard to get a win as in a debut. Matter of fact, a win in the UFC. And to just do it like that in spectacular fashion, you know, that's that's something everyone dreams of. And I made it happen. And I knew I had to make it happen. So um, and I knew I was capable to make it happen. It's just something I had to prove to myself and, and to everybody else. And you go from one prospect to another prospect. Both of them have some hype. You have some hype as well. So it's like hype versus hype. March 16th, Las Vegas, Christian Rodriguez. Thoughts on him and, and the fighting style? Uh, Christian's a good fighter. He, I think he's well-rounded. I think he's good everywhere. Um, no matter where the fight goes, I think he has an answer for it. Uh, but the guys that he's been fighting down at 135, you know, his last two fights have been basically children. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I'm more of a grown man, and I'm going to hold my own in this fight. And, you know, 
I think it's going to be a good fight. I think I'm still capable to get a finish, fully capable, but I don't think he's going to give me anything. I think I'm going to have to take it um, and take everything that he worked for, basically. So I'm just going to perform to the best of my ability, and I think the rest will take care of itself. You know, Like I said, I've been training since I was a kid for this. I know Christian has too, and I think it's a big, a big fight between two rising prospects, um, and I think the winner is going to have, have a good uh, foot in the door right there. For sure, and um, you know the the size difference. Do you think that's going to play a major factor, especially in the grappling exchanges? Uh, I think me and Christian are probably when we get in there, we'll probably be the same size. I'm not super big at 45, but I have always fought at 45, so I'm used to moving bigger bodies around. You know, I train with a lot of 55ers, and I'm not scared to train with 70 pounders uh, that are in the UFC. Like so. I'm used to pushing that big weight around where I feel like he's somewhat used to it, but his last few fights have been against young, young guys that don't have the real horsepower that like a grown man has, you know? So, um, not to take anything away from the same and Rosas, but you know, they, I think they will be great one day. They're just young in the game still. They're super young. Yeah. There's like levels of strength right that you have your strength when you're like a young man but then then there's that grown man strength and then the old man strength right so there's yeah. there's levels to the strength 100 <laughs> percent. and i'm about to be a dad so i'm hoping this uh dad strength kicks in asap <laughs> yeah it seems like every everybody that is about to be a dad or just became a dad and they fight they almost all win the, the winning percentage is pretty damn high yeah I mean, I I hope it stays like that for mine. You know, I'm not I'm in a position where um, I don't really feel like losing's an option. I feel like I have to win um, at all costs by any means necessary. I have to get this win uh, for my family and for myself and my career. So um, I know Christian probably feels the same way, but I feel like I have more to lose. And uh, Rodriguez, you know, he's m- missed weight multiple times at Bantam weight. And we've seen fighters move up in weight and miss weight again, even though it's the weight class above. What's your views on opponents missing weight? I mean, I don't think he's going to miss weight by any means. I th- but I think if you miss weight, you know, it's not it's just not professional. I've I've always made weight. I missed w- weight one time in my life when I was a kid. And ever since then, it hasn't happened again. So, you know. You have to be locked in, and when you're not locked in and ready to make the weight, it just shows that you weren't re- truly prepared. You know, you didn't do everything, and I'm I'm at a point where I do everything. I don't I don't cheat on my meals. I eat right. I train right. I do everything to the best of my ability. So, you know, I think that there's a big advantage in that as well. And and the extra cash as well, right? Oh, we need that. We need <laughs> yeah, that. We need that. <laughs> That 20, 30, 40 percent, you know, it's like that's that's great money for you. Just and you don't have to do anything. It's their fault. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you transition to Factory X. you got a, you know, an awesome team around you. Coaches is crazy. Um, how has that evolution been for you? You know, I mean, you've been there for a little bit now. Oh, it's, it's been great. You know, it's hard making the move out here. I, I had to change a lot in my life to to make it work. But ever since we got settled, you know, everything's been smooth. I actually live right outside the gym in my RV. So I just wake up, brush my teeth and go train, you know, all day. So it, it works out really well. Um, I love the coaching staff. They've done nothing but help me. And I love my training partners. Um, yeah. That, Yusuf Zalal, Chris Rodriguez, uh, Markel Maderos, everybody. They're, they're all such good people, such great humans and, and partners for me. Um, and our styles contrast a lot. You know, Factory X has great strikers, and they've been criticized a little bit about their uh, their wrestling, you know. And me being such a high-level wrestler, I'm contributing to the gym a lot with my grappling knowledge. And then Coach Mark Montoya and some of the other guys on the team really helped me out a lot with my striking. And so it's like almost like a perfect mesh. It works perfectly. Yeah, it seems like you guys have a like a, a very family-oriented environment with the team. Yeah, I mean, we all, there's not like uh, separate training times for everybody like some of the other big gyms. We all train at a specific time every morning. Um, if you're late, you're not training, you know, so we show up, we get the work in, and then 
some some guys come in for afternoon classes. I know I'm always there, and uh, we just we just make it work. Everybody's training together. Everybody's helping each other, and I think that's how how champions are built. Um, I was watching a, a, another interview that you did, and you mentioned that you know you're you're a little under the weather during training camp. You know, how does that affect the type of training you're doing for maybe a couple of days? Really, it doesn't, man. I push through it no matter what. You know, it's training camp, and sometimes you're not going to feel great. You're going to have injuries. You're going to be sick, whatever. Um, the biggest thing is is not resting too much, you know. Like, I want to stay active and, and busy in my camp, even if I don't feel good. I think that's a mental advantage for me. You know, some guys like to take a day off. I'm the type of guy that, that like – no matter how I'm feeling, I'm going to get that work in regardless. Even if it's the worst day on the planet for me, I'm still showing up to the gym, still getting the work in and still improving myself. Yeah, I've heard stories behind the scenes of uh, UFC fighters getting ready for fights and catching COVID in the middle of the fight and have to take two, three weeks off during the camp. You know, what I mean, doing nothing pretty much and then return to camp and then fight like three weeks later. You know, what I mean, it's some insane stories out there. Yeah. I mean, regardless, if I had something like that, I, I just had basically like a normal like flu symptoms, whatever. Yeah. Um, but if you have something like that, you know, you got to kind of take that into your own hands, like go go work out by yourself where no one's at, you know, because um, you don't want to get your whole team sick by any means. But also you have to make sure you stay busy and and get your body prepared for what it's about to go through. For sure. You know, hopefully nothing that happens. Now, your expectations, man, in this fight against Christian Rodriguez, how do you want to perform in this one? Man, I think if as long as I perform and I, if I bring my A game, I think it's going to be I think it, it shouldn't be a tough night for me. You know, if I show up with my C game, Christian's going to make it hard. And, you know, if I don't show up, then that's a problem. It's a problem. So I really pride myself on performing under the lights. And, you know, that's what I plan to do. I'll do everything in my power to prepare for that. And, you know, on that night, we'll, we'll hopefully show up that A-plus fighter that I know I can be. Some, some questions, you know, off topic. Drug-Free Sports International, they're the company that took over what USADA was doing. Have you had experiences with them yet? Oh, yeah, I've had a couple. They've came by. Okay. Okay. Anything interesting? Like, I... Oh, I forgot who I was talking to, but they said that they felt like USADA was a little bit more professional. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So they came in, it was basically the same system, but you could really tell the difference in quality of the materials. Like um, when they took our urine sample and stuff, it was just way cheaper containers. And, you know, they kind of threw both samples in the same bag. So it felt a little, a little on the cheap end. Um, the division you fight in, featherweight, Ilya Taporia is the, the brand new champion. I wanted to get your idea of like what would be the most interesting matchup for him next. Would it be a rematch with Volk, Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, Sean O'Malley? What do you think is gonna? What's interesting to you? Um, I like. I want to see how Holloway performs this weekend. Um, but I think that would be an exciting fight because it would almost be like uh. Same same situation as he's about to have this weekend. It's almost like Holloway's power, uh, uh, output versus Gaethje's power. So I think it's going to be the same thing with the Tapura fight. Um, I'd like to see that fight with him and or Yair. I like the Yair fight because Yair is kind of crazy. He throws a bunch of crazy stuff. And, you know, you can really change a fight and throw someone off by doing some of the tactics he uses. So I think that would be an exciting fight as well. Yeah, it's uh... – it's exciting. It's always exciting times when the champion changes, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, it's sad too. You know, Volk was such a great champion, uh, and I have nothing but respect for him. You know, he never really did too much. He just he just stayed in his lane and was a great champion. So, uh, it's sad, but it's also important for the division to keep continuing forward, so guys like me can get up there and you know, uh, kind of take their place. For sure, you know, it's it's. It's starting to happen. You know what I mean? Those, those types of things. Uh, the next generation of fighters are starting to rise up. You get your opportunity, man. March 16th, you'll see Fight Night in Las Vegas. Isaac, thank you so much, man, for taking the time and all the best. And, uh, you know, I heard that you're going to have a, uh, your first child. So 
congrats on that and uh maybe you get that 50k 100k who knows what it is let's let's get the money yeah, let's get it let's get it 100 percent. appreciate the time brother